The doctor is in. Hi guys, in this episode we're going to be talking about trigeminal neuralgia. How to recognize it and more importantly how to escape from the horrific pain that this condition can cause. Let's get started. Alright, so first off, what exactly is trigeminal neuralgia? Well, it's, that's kind of like explaining what an elephant is or a horse is and you're blind. So what we're going to do is we're going to feel a few different parts and as we feel the different parts of this uh, animal, you'll start to become familiar with it. And before you know it, you'll have a tactile picture of what trigeminal neuralgia is. Now, first off, it is a chronic condition. What do we mean by that? We mean that when you have it, it's gonna last for greater than three months. That's what, when we say the condition is chronic in medicine, that is what we are alluding to. Now, I saw a lady uh, come in probably within the last month um, with this condition and she was describing the typical, what I call the typical five S's of trigeminal neuralgia. So what are the five S's? Well, let me just switch hands here. The first one is severe pains, severe. Then they're sudden. They're shocking in uh, quality. They last for seconds to minutes. And on typically on one side, in about 1% of cases, one to 5% of cases, it could be on both sides. So these are the five S's that immediately clue me in that we're walking on a path towards a diagnosis of trigeminal neuralgia. So not going away and these five S's. Um, typically, if we use this illustration here, this gentleman here suffering with um, an acute episode of uh, trigeminal neuralgia, the pains are very severe. And in, in other words, when we're talking about the pains from trigeminal neuralgia, they're very short, so usually only for a few seconds, but severe, like they stop you in your tracks, they bring you to tears, you can't move, you're just stuck in space and time, just excruciating, can't wait for it to end. The other thing is the quality of the pains usually tend to feel like electric shock, so shocking type pain. Of course, again, this is not uh, foolproof. There are a few cases where it's uh, burning or numbing type pain, but in general, people describe it as a shocking type pain, lasting for seconds on one side of their face. So when somebody comes in the office, like that unfortunate lady that I recently saw, and they describe these features here, I'm immediately starting to think, okay, could this be trigeminal neuralgia? Now, to understand what trigeminal neuralgia is, where does that even that strange word trigeminal come from? So let's look at a skull, which I've got prepared here for you. And um, one of the things that most people don't tend to think about or realize is that um, the brain sends signals out to the face. That's how you can feel and um, feel hot, cold, etc. Now, the, the skull is, uh, uh, enclosed containers like having a wall around the brain so what people don't tend to realize is that there's also a lot of holes in your face so that's illustrated here on on this um, uh, model you see these holes here and if you think about it even your eye sockets are basically holes that lead an entrance into the brain so that your brain can communicate out through this uh, wall of bone so in trigeminal neurology the problem is happening around this space here around the ear let me get you another picture of that and um, we believe, no one is exactly sure what causes the trigeminal neuralgia, but we believe that it's um, a feature of the trigeminal nerve as it passes out through the face, as maybe you can see that there. So this is the trigeminal nerve. It fans out like a, like a, a, a finger across your face. Um, see these branches, there's three branches one, two, three. So this one supplies down by the chin, this one supplies across by your cheek, and this one, uh, the ophthalmic um, is above by the brown eye area. So this is on the exterior of your uh, face. There's another illustration of it here. There's an anatomical one showing you how it spreads out, fans out from behind the ear. All right, so that is the trigeminal nerve, and tri stands for three, hence trigeminal. Um, so, all right, so we understand 
where the nerve comes from and what's happening. Uh, what we believe is happening is that these little tunnels where the nerves are coming through, in the case of the trigeminal nerve, that it's almost like a form of uh, like carpal tunnel syndrome where the nerve is passing through a pathway that's too small to accommodate it, which then causes it to be pinched. So if you imagine like when you hit your funny bone, how that electric shock feels, it's a bit like that, uh, happening repeatedly through the day, um, but just for very short periods of time, just like when you hit your funny bone, just for a few seconds and then it's gone. But you can't wait for it to be gone. So the next thing um, that will clue us in that it might be trigeminal neuralgia is in addition to those features that we just described there, uh, it's usually in people over 50 years old. That being said, it can happen in any age group and the lady that I saw in the last month, I think she was in her late 40s. So you don't have to be 50 plus um, in order to get this horrific condition. Now, uh, the other thing with that, with those pictures that you saw there, the nerve passes out the face and has these three branches that wrap across like this. Um, you can have trigeminal neuralgia in just one nerve or two or all three um, uh, tributaries. All right, so we have a handle now on diagnosing the trigeminal neuralgia, what might be causing it and where it's emanating from. Let's talk now about triggers for it. Because the next thing that people will come in and tell me, very often um, when people come in like this uh, lady, they've already seen a dentist because they usually assume it's some kind of dental pathology. Um, and then they'll see the dentist and then they'll be like, uh-uh, no, it's not rotten teeth. So another th uh, feature that will clue me in that maybe trigeminal neuralgia is uh, this concept of triggers. Oops, that's a G, triggers. So some of the common triggers would be um, very light touch over the, the affected part of the face, just a light touch, something that should never be uh, considered painful, will cause staggering amounts of, um, of pain in these individuals of this type of sudden severe type thing. So some of the common triggers for it will be simple things like shaving, um, just touching your face, I don't know, maybe to scratch or for whatever reason, or to lean on it. Uh, washing the face, so you splash some water on it, whack, intense pain. For some people, unfortunately, even just simple talking will set it off. Brushing your teeth can set it off. So any slight little um, manipulation of that trigeminal nerve where it sits will set off these intense um, pains. So that is um, how we identify it. Now, there, uh, make no mistake, there's other things that can also cause um, pains in the face that we also have to consider before saying that it's trigeminal neuralgia. For example, sinusitis. Say you had maxillary sinusitis, that could also be pain on one side of the face. Um, dental pain, which is often why people will go and check with the dentist first. Um, shingles. Uh, there, there's many other potential causes. So don't worry yourself with that aspect. These are the most, the, the symptoms in common that you tend to find with trigeminal neuralgia. But don't think that that's the only thing that can cause pain on one side of the face. There's other things to consider. I'm just trying to make things really simple here. Now, in terms of uh, treatment, so Rx, the most common thing that we use is a drug chemical called uh, Tegretol or carbamazepine. Carbamazepine. And the weird thing about that is carbamazepine is actually licensed as an anti-seizure drug but it works in at least eight out of 10 people. So 80% of cases will respond to carbamazepine. The carbamazepine works by the same method that it will work for a seizure disorder. Any nerves that are rapidly firing, they need to keep signaling their, um, their ion gates open and close quickly to be able to keep sending a signal. This frustrates that process, so it, it tones down uh, the ability of the trigeminal nerve to keep pumping a pain signal to the brain. And very often, if you can get through a, a period of um, grief with the trigeminal neuralgia, you often will get a um, temporary, if not long-term uh, remission before getting another episode. So a lot of the idea behind the carbamazepine is just to get you to that point where your natural healing processes will um, bring you to the point of some degree of remission. Now, um, some other agents that we use, another one is Elevil or uh, Imitriptyline. That works pretty good in some people too. 
uh, gabapentin, which is another um, anti-seizure type medicine, gabapentin. And um, I've also used some other things like uh, Topamax. And in those unfortunate 20% uh, of cases where this doesn't work, what I usually do for them is I stack it. So in other words, instead of just giving them one agent, I will stack like a sandwich, several different agents all at once. I have one guy that I think I had to use like four different agents in combination to get him some relief. And he's been doing well now for about it, about 10 years. Eventually, as, as the symptoms get less, then you either reduce the doses on the stack or trim some of the, the bread off the sandwich. So reduce some of the drugs. Um, that being said, there's also um, surgical cases. In my career so far, I've only ever seen one case that was so bad it didn't respond to drugs and had to progress on to surgery. So surgery is another option. Uh, the surgeries are generally of two different types. One is decompression. So again, with the theory that the nerve is being pinched, you go into that hole and open it up some more, just like you would in carpal tunnel, so decompression. The other is a destruction. So in these cases, it's like point of no return. You decide, look, the cost of living with this condition is so difficult, so horrific, we're just gonna destroy the nerve. The, the cost in both cases is um, generally either there's still some pain afterwards with decompression, or with destruction, you're actually gonna be substituting pain for numbness. So that area of your face is gonna be permanently numb after you do destruction. And that's the reason why we often will opt to try to hold off as long as possible and use drugs, because eventually they, you, they very often will get some degree of remission if they can wait long enough. Now, um, one of the things that unfortunate lady that I saw, um, she was trying to hold out um, without taking medication. So she wanted to know, is there any natural things that she could do? Is there anything preventative? Was she doing something wrong, et cetera, et cetera. As we don't know exactly the cause why, why some people are afflicted with this condition, there's no way to, to give you a prevention type regimen because we don't know what's causing it in the first place. Then uh, in terms of holding out and just waiting for it to go away, remember we said at the very beginning, it's a chronic condition. In other words, if you're gonna try to wait this thing out, you're gonna be waiting for at least three months. Oh, wait a minute, that didn't show there. So chronic condition means greater than three months. Sorry about that. So I had to impress on that lady, um, I don't know of any natural methods that, that help with this condition. It's not like, um, say, depression or hypertension where you can eat your way out of it or change your diet and it's gonna make a dramatic difference. And if you're thinking that you're just gonna be able to hold out and wait it out and it's eventually gonna go away, the minimum time you're gonna be looking at is at least three months. And most cases I've seen last four years. So my recommendation is shake the devil's hand, take medication, have a decent life. So that is a trigeminal neurology in a nutshell. I hope that if you or someone you're affected with is afflicted with this horror, that um, this stuff here would help you to understand what's happening and um, how you can still have a, a decent quality of life um, by letting your doctors help you. Thanks for watching and have a great, terrific rest of your day. Thanks for watching. Get notified of new videos. Subscribe now. If you found this video helpful, support us by sharing it with all of your friends and throw us a like below. You're a star. Cheers and cheerio.